फाइव है मिस्टर निर्मल एंडो कार गुप्ता ये सर हाँ आई हूँ सीन योर डिस्कशन इट इज वेरी नाइस प्रॉब्ली वी कैन डिस्कस मोर अगेन ओके एस्पेशियली अबाउट दी यू नो दिस रिलेशन बिटवीन कंक्रीट स्ट्रेंथ एंड सीमेंट स्ट्रेंथ इज वेरी क्रिटिकल वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ग्रेड्स ग्रेड ऑफ सीमेंट इज नो मीनिंग एट ऑल so those points some of the points you know we can bring to know so that when somebody is using a cement on the site he knows what is the strength not the grade so like that there are some you know critical points which are necessary from the field engineer side so we will have definitely sir Similarly, there was one discussion on uh, acceptance criteria of the concrete yes. for IS four five six. It was also, you know, a good, interesting presentation came in and uh, some uh, webinar. Ujjal Gupta, very important. Ah, Ujjal Sahab, yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, Dr. Subramanian, I joined from uh, USA. He is the famous author of, you know, RCC and steel. Which are uh, very important books for uh, all civil engineers in India. So, Dr. Hey. Subramanian Narayan has joined. Welcome, sir. Uh, welcome, sir. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Welcome. It is uh, a night nice for you. actually it is our time for him. Still, he has joined. We should thank him. And uh, what I am yeah, presenting is, is very, uh, Dr. Subramanian. It is NS. Yeah, so thank you, Rajiv. Uh, preliminary talk only I am making. Uh, it will be too. Fundamental for you. <laughs> it is eight eight thirty a.m. for me. Ah, uh, eight thirty a.m. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Here it is seven zero five. Sir, uh, is my uh, screen visible, sir? Yeah, yeah, now it's visible. Yeah, yeah, visible. Oh, let, uh, sir, I think uh, we should start. so uh, i on behalf of concrete engineers new delhi i welcome all the participants who are, have uh, joined today for a, a very knowledgeable uh, presentation which is introduction to geopolymer concretes material overview and uh, uh, today's uh, uh, speaker is dr np rajamane uh, he has a vast experience on Uh, geopolymer concrete and uh, particularly concrete technology and uh, he is founder and former head of center for advanced uh, concrete research srm ist university and uh, advanced material lab uh, he has set up in uh, csir serc chennai and he is been uh, a committee member and an advisor to a lot of bodies related to a uh, geopolymer concrete so uh, he has written uh, books also on geopolymer concretes which are uh, available on A amazon also you can uh, buy those books and uh, you can also uh, study uh, about geopolymer concrete so today's uh, session will be about uh, the introduction of geopolymer concrete so i would request uh, rajamane sir to kindly proceed sir sir thank you okay um i'll just you have to uh, reshare sir your screen okay okay is my screen uh, seen yes sir uh, yes sir yes sir is it is visible sir uh, you it is visible okay you put it on slide show mode sir yes 
yeah okay uh, and i would request so, all the uh, participants to pin this uh, uh, sir's presentation so it will be uh, visible at all times thank you please proceed sir okay uh, actually uh, uh, thank you uh, for giving me this uh, presentation chance uh, on the uh, little basics of the geopolymer concrete mm -hmm. um I have been working on uh, concrete technology since 1973 and I worked on almost all types of concrete, all special concretes including uh, uh, reaction powder concrete or ultra high performance concrete where we can produce strength up to, we have produced up to 250 MP and 300 MP also. And later on I started working in geopolymer concrete uh, for the first time in the country and uh, I always uh, uh, try to do only uh, room temperature curing. So my uh, earliest work is only with reference to the, uh, room temperature curing. I never use the uh, hot uh, air curing. Um, but later on, I used it also for special purpose where we wanted to develop specific uh, and geopolymer concretes. And that was part of uh, one chemistry PhD student of mine at SRM University where we can make the geopolymer concrete to become stronger after fire resist fire. So when they subject it to fire, the concrete will not lose its strength, but it will become uh, even better because there is a transformation of the microstructure and the uh, molecular structure changes. So that is a very special concrete and we can call it as a nearer to the ceramic concrete. Okay. So today I am going to present only on the uh, general uh, concrete where it is related to conventional Portland cement applications. So uh, what you can say is always uh, uh, wherever we are using Portland cement, it can be always uh, uh, converted into geopolymer concrete. That is the basics. Okay. So there is no necessity to think that where this be used, that should be used, not necessary to discuss at all. Okay. And uh, the most important is uh, India is going to have a lot of infrastructure activity. So their cement consumption is going to go very high. And uh, this 136 is uh, some number. These are not exact numbers now. They were collected long back. And uh, we can, but they are representative. So our cement consumption is going to go very high because our infrastructure is still to be built a lot. And uh, we can see uh, how much of uh, uh, our carbon dioxide emission comes due to the uh, Portland cement, we know very well. So it is always better to go for the alternative uh, cement concrete also. It doesn't mean that we should not uh, use the Portland cement concrete. It has to be used because uh, that has got more than 250 years of uh, research work done. And it is a highly developed and highly useful and simple material for most of the uh, engineers and users on this site. Geopolymer has not reached the stage yet. So geopolymer still remains a specialized, not in terms of application, but uh, you know the field people should become familiar, then only they should start using. Okay, so th that this uh, our geopolymer will help us to, you know, uh, uh, whatever uh, government of India is uh, uh, promise to the world uh, about their uh, carbon footprint reduction. Uh, so if we use a little bit of less of cement, it will be help in the form of geopolymer concrete, it will help. Okay. And, uh, and now, uh, actually, uh, today my presentation is only on geopolymer concrete. I am not going to discuss anything with reference to port concrete or how they are compared because I want to make it very specific and uh, so please uh, uh, we can always raise questions or write to me later on and we can uh, answer those probably in the second part we can have one day presentation on how geopolymer concrete compares with uh, conventional concrete in terms of all the properties we know of. Okay, and today I am not going to talk on the comparison and also uh, most of the time I am avoiding the quantified values of any of the properties I am talking. Um, 
my aim is to just make a overall view and give a basic picture then we can uh, work on the details of that later on now we can see geopolymer is uh, actually a 3d polymeric chain and ring structure this is the basic actually the uh, binder material this is not there in uh, this is not the case in portland cement and these two are always required whenever we want to make a geopolymer these two uh, components must be present in our resource material this is a very basic requirement and that way you know these are the things we can use okay and uh, so now just to remind for some of the people who are present here not for everybody uh, what is a uh, you know geopolymer polymer like that i want to make a little bit clear so we can see in organic material the carbon is the continuing chain form the chain carbon you can see here okay so we can see that is uh, here you can see how many carbons are present and mostly they, it is all uh, joined by uh, hydrogen or chlorine or uh, um, any other uh, oxygen so many things so that we get the polymer so this is the original uh, liquid chemical called monomer and it is a uh, solidifies and it becomes a polymer by some uh, polymerization process and the uh, now so many uh, carbons come together and form a polymer and this is the basic polymer and this is what is called a uh, plastic what you call plastic is nothing but this kind of a continuous carbon presenting a carbon present in the molecule okay but in geopolymer concrete this is not organic it is inorganic it means there is no carbon chain at all here this is very important because if there is no carbon chain we should not look at the properties of plastics and come here and who, who, those who are very much specialized in uh, uh, organic polymers cannot work here cannot uh, transfer those points here because this is completely around it and there is because uh, there is a silicon and there is aluminum there is no one element at all there are two elements one is silicon and aluminum and they are called four coordinates you can see see these are available in uh, these are valency uh, bonds you can see they can be aluminum is available in 3 4 5 like that but what is useful to us is only four coordinated and this is silicon is a naturally most of the time it is four coordinated only four valency because of that you can see four coordination aluminum is three valency but still uh, it is aluminum is able to available in the form of uh, four coordinates and uh, because it is three basically basic three valence is 3 we should have one more that's why we should use uh, this is sodium or potassium so this becomes one uh, uh, you can say element set and this is another element set these two will form a series of uh, uh, molecule structure and that is our geopolymer we can see here there is a silicon here there is a silicon here there is aluminum here so this uh, aluminum silicon are present here because aluminum is again four coordinated silicon is also four coordinated so this four coordinated on aluminum will form the basic binder material okay depend upon how many silicons are present in a chain how many aluminum are present the properties of the geopolymer will change okay and this is what is the four coordination this is meaning of that you can see inside a silicon and uh, in a tetrahedral form there will be oxygen present you can see here okay same in aluminum also you can see same the center is aluminum and here there are four uh, oxygen and these the tetrahedral systems will go on joining it is not elemental joining it tetrahedral system joining and becoming the polymer okay so but one more thing is the silicon and silicon fine but the silicon and aluminum will not join directly it will be joined through only oxygen so there is a uh, i uh, previously i put that rule here levenstein rule but anyway let us not bother about chemistry too much of it but let us know that silicon cannot join with aluminum directly it is through the oxygen only okay so this is uh, please don't think i am talking chemistry here 
i want to make it material science side and i am not talking about the you know uh, lot of uh, field uh, i mean uh, uh, engineers uh, point of view i am trying to make it a little bit more of the basics okay let us there is a way we can re start respecting this material okay so this is what i said you can see here there is one aluminum here in this chain there are three aluminiums so depend upon that you know number of aluminum present in the chain uh, we can find out the properties of the concrete this is all you know started by uh, okay and I, i want to just uh, very few people have found out this kind of molecules if they want whatever geopolymer work they have done because that requires lot of applications of ftir and uh, microscopy and that is usually not done by engineers they have to have collaboration with the chemical engineers and chemistry that's why most of the people are not able to look at these uh, structures at all but it is an important parameter required and one more thing geopolymer is not civil engineers material at all later on it became civil engineers material earlier it was a material developed and used by so many types of uh, science and engineering people chemical engineers geophysicist or uh, geologist so many people clay chemist so many people uh, work on archaeologists they work on that and the initial before uh, davidovits uh, davidovits everybody was using the, their own terminology so you can see these are the terminologies used to represent the same silicon and aluminum joining molecules production we can see here i have listed uh, um, 15 so actually there are some more also available now recently so i can make it 20 also the reason i am presenting this the number of uh, names is when you want to make a real research uh, study or you can see let us a survey you should not look at the word only geopolymer you should look at all these uh, uh terminologies so that we can get a real picture of what is happening in the this field okay and now uh, geopolymer concrete uh, has got a powdery ingredient granular ingredient and a liquid ingredient one more thing i may be repeating the points again and again please don't mind it because sometimes it may be necessary to look at it uh, uh, repeated way so that uh, it registers properly in our room and i uh, just said you know it has got powder ingredient granular ingredient and liquid ingredient. and powder ingredient is nothing but which is having a sio2 in it o content okay and granular content is a fine and coarse aggregate these are mostly filler systems and liquid is sodium silicate solution sodium silicate solution i am putting here geopolymer because sodium silicate solution is available in the commercial form okay and we add it to add a sodium with hydroxide we add it when you add this two it becomes sodium silicate actually the geopolymers geo sodium silicate solution so please don't think that alkali activator solution or alkali activator solution or some other names or correct names they are not correct they are simply they are again they are sodium silicate solution only so whenever you make a mix of these two again it is sodium silicate solution but its uh, property is different so i want to make it clear let us not talk about alkali activator solution word at all it is still a sodium silicate solution it has got modified that is uh, this commercial sodium silicate gets modified by addition of uh, sodium hydroxide not changing the ph much people think sodium hydroxide we are adding for ph no i will show you that some slide it is only to change the property of the sodium silicate to required level and uh, that's why we have this okay that means you know uh, sodium silicate uh, solution or liquid of geopolymer is a mix of sodium hydroxide solution and sodium silicate solution which is commercially factory made and known properties what are the properties you should know the molar ratio as i told you it has got sio2 and na2o what is the ratio of them it is not one at all sodium silicate means only one sodium oxide and silicon dioxide no in sodium silicate that uh, sodium silicate is not equal to um, sodium oxide is not equal to silicon dioxide okay it is the ratio is changing that's why we get so many types of uh, 
factory made uh, sodium silicate solution and we should also know sodium concentration solid concentration why i am putting this point is many of the papers in indian publication don't talk about this too properly at all and give importance to this okay and sodium hydroxide is uh, always we we must uh, define its uh, concentration not necessarily molarity alone we should uh, define its uh, concentration and it is always laboratory made generally we don't get it directly in the market though we get uh, so called dye uh, but uh, generally we use uh, sodium hydroxide uh, pellets and make sodium hydroxide solution by adding water to it okay so this is generally if it laboratory made so i have said uh, this is a sodium silicate solution plus sodium hydroxide becomes my liquid component of the disease okay and this i told you commercial solution these two are the uh, ratios when we can test any solution for this sio2 content na2 content as per is code okay there is is code available for sodium silicate solution used by uh, so many other people uh, mechanical engineers and chemical engineers use it for so many purposes and there is a method to uh, measure the sio2 na2 i want to make it as i told you i am going to talk on the material side morely so uh, sio2 and na2 is only symbolic in nature they are not present as sio2 they are not presented uh, so na2o but we can uh, determine uh, two parameters by chemical analysis and take the ratios that represents the, that is one of the characterization of the sodium silicate solution so this ratio is very important and uh, you know as i told you the sodium silicate solution has got three components one is silicon dioxide and there is sodium oxide and uh, uh, water that is the uh, water is h2o okay and uh, these two mix will together a sodium silicate uh, solid so when you dry the sodium silicate solution the h2o goes out and will get this point so this is also required to be uh, known in the sodium silicate solution we have prepared or we are using or we are purchasing and this ratio is also clear it is not only the uh, total uh, how much is the ratio is important because that will determine the nature of the chemicals i will tell you later on and density so these four components must be determined for every sodium silicate we are using in our geopolymer work and most of the time in indian population they never talk about these four uh, properties together okay that's why they actually uh, we are not able to really uh, repeat the work they have done because this is many times they are not available okay and what is molar ratio is that this uh, molarity is nothing but uh, molar is nothing but in terms of uh, it is also measurement of the weights only but it is measured in some moles for example uh, uh, silicon dioxide its uh, molarity uh, molar uh, molecular weight is 60 si32 uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, 32 and this is uh, um uh, 28 becomes 60 so molecular molecular weight of a sio2 is uh, 60 and uh, so one mole means 60 grams and sodium oxide uh, is 62 molecular weight so 62 gram means one mole that's all it is like you know 100 kilo is equal to one quintal like that so we can uh, take the uh, concentrations in terms of grams or moles and if you take the ratio in terms of moles it become molar ratio it take the ratio in terms of weight it become weight ratio fortunately only for sodium silicate the ratio is almost same but it is not same for potassium silicate solution and other solutions you are having okay so uh, but generally we use sodium silicate solution because that is readily available and cheaper one so these two ratios are almost same in case of this uh, material okay and uh, one more thing sodium meta silicate is also available in the market a powder form and it is readily soluble sodium meta silicate it means it is having only one ratio if it is more than one ratio or less than one ratio actually that powder is not easily soluble okay but it is available but it requires some kind of a special solution for example sodium silicate solution has got a ratio of 1.8 to 4.2 this ratio and this can be available in the solid form also they are selling it 
but to, to make it solution it requires not ordinary temperature it requires some kind of a special application that's why we usually buy sodium silicate solution directly whereas a metal silicate we can buy the powder directly and use uh, to make the solution we want but its ratio is only one but here ratio is changing from 1.8 to 4.2 and this is uh, meant for different applications in the society industries and we are only buying from whatever is available in the market so we can take any of the solution no problem for us and we should know what you have taken okay that we should be reported uh, and uh, in geo geopolymer mix the ratio is the 0.5 to 1.4 generally you can see it is 1.8 here and is one here 1.8 has to come down to 0.5 that means the ratio has to come down that means this has to increase then the na2 has to increase means you have to add sodium hydroxide that's all you can see the range here metal silicate is only this much almost equal sodium oxide to the silicon dioxide is almost same whereas commercial sodium silicate solution is 1.8 to 4.2 you can see so much variation is available in the market but when you make geopolymer concrete it can change from 0.5 to 1.4 people you make depend upon their uh, design and other things it can uh, have the ratio of 0.5 to 1.4 that's why geopolymer concrete doesn't mean only one type of material whereas portland cement concrete is only one type chemically here it is so different you can see the ratio is changing from 0.5 to 1.4 it can be beyond also uh, generally it is not below this but it's generally beyond that also okay so this we should remember and uh, all the people who are working in geopolymer uh, concrete should be aware of this point keep this in the mind okay don't just get away from the, the basics so as i told you uh, what is available sodium silicate commercial is very high wi so it is not satisfactory for our reactions okay so you, you must have the lower value so we want to change it to lower value by adding sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide can be shown as sodium oxide plus uh, water so we are adding sodium hydroxide means we are adding na2o that means we are adding the uh, bottom component sio2 by na2o gas reduced that's why we are using sodium uh, hydroxide solution it is not for ph it is meant for uh, reducing the increasing the uh, na2o content in the solution of the commercial uh, sodium silicate and get the uh, required uh, you can say ratio why that ratio is coming i'll tell you and uh, uh, sodium uh, silicate uh, sodium hydroxide solution ph is ranging um, uh, ranging from 7 to 15.3 molarity is available from up to 19 moles it is available uh, this is wrong uh, molarity is uh, simple water is uh, 7 uh, uh, molarity can be zero because sodium hydroxide zero means it is water only and it can go up to 19 moles molarity okay and the ph is correspond to 0 is 7 and correspond to 19 is 15.3 so if anybody talks that ph is only 0 to 4, 1 to 14 this is wrong this get away from the thinking and say molarity uh, ph is can be anything it is nothing but a mathematical number as you can see here i have put 14 15.3 but most of the time people use only up to 11 for all most of the chemical works that's why 14 is okay for them but for us we should know that we are talking on uh, different uh, solutions so our uh, ph will be much more than what people are using in their chemical industries so i told you sodium hydroxide solution has got a molarity of 4 to 18 what you use in the geopolymer okay and the ph is range from 14.26 15.25 so molarity of sodium hydroxide is uh, so much ph is very high but this ph is never available in our geopolymer concrete because we are connecting this with sodium silicate solution we can see here when you mix the sodium hydroxide solution the ph is only around 11 uh, 11.2 to 12.8 not big uh, the, 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 it is similar to we can say calcium hydroxide uh, which is you know uh, uh, there in the ordinary concrete okay so uh, this uh, sodium silicate solution uh, commercial is uh, this much 
but when you make a geopolymer, it is ranging up 12.5 to 13.5. You can see the slight change. That means it is of the order of the ordinary concrete. Am I uh, audible? Hello, Mr. Walia. Yes, sir, you are Hello. quite audible, sir. Because uh, yes, my sir. earphone sometimes, you know, it goes away. That's why I was checking. Okay. No, 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 and, no, sir, you are quite, you are quite audible, sir. Okay, fine. No, molarity means we should. Uh, no, I want to put this point uh, clear to the all the engineers uh, and also students and scholars working here. Molarity means how many moles of sodium hydroxide are present in one liter. That means 40 into m grams are to be measured in one liter of solution. You take a one liter of sodium hydroxide solution and find out how many NaOH molecules are present and convert that into moles. That is 40 into m gram means it is for uh, m moles. Okay. And now, how to prepare? People think that, you know, I want a 10 molarity means that 40 into 10, I will put in one liter of water. Wrong. Some people will say, I will 40 into that molarity, 10 molarity, so many grams, I'll put in one liter, one kilo of water. Wrong. And some people are putting 40 into m, 10 molarity means 40, 40 into 10 grams of sodium hydroxide solids, solids in 1000 minus 40 minus m grams of water. All the three I have seen in Indian papers, and this is completely wrong. We should have the final solution, one liter, one liter solution. How much present is in that water? How much sodium is present? Not known at all. But anyhow, I have developed the equation for that. We can directly use that. That's why I feel engineers start uh, talk, talking about molarity. They can talk about con uh, concentration more easily. So do, we can forget about molarity. We can talk about concentration, 10%, 20% solution. Okay, uh, we can see here the say how much changes. This is the original one. Okay, if if you use one type of the method they are talking about, you know, in uh, uh, for thousand minus uh, forty into m grams, uh, you can see molarity is on unnecessary higher side. What you have assumed. Okay, six means actually it is not six; it is more than uh, nearly eight. And similarly, if you use in one liter of water. The, the gram, you can see lower uh, molarity we get. So you are not getting the M molarity, you are getting less than that. So you should not write also that I use uh, this uh, uh, M molarity or 10 molarity means uh, 400 gram put in one liter of water, 10 model uh, solution. No. So uh, this has to be done uh, thought properly and uh, uh, the equations have been developed for one liter of solution of the given molarity how many grams of uh, powder, how many grams of water we should take, it is already known, okay? So this, uh, no, there is the equation available also, molarity is related to the density and the uh, concentration. So this is a theoretical calculation, there is no, uh, what I mean is uh, empirical value. That means if you know the density of a solution, if you know the concentration of a solution, you can always calculate the molarity. That means we can prepare your concentration solution of any uh, concentration to find out the density and you can calculate molarity. So forget about making molarity solutions. Okay. So this is the standard uh, regular uh, analytical equation and this is from the fundamentals. There is no uh, mystery at all here. Okay. But now uh, what uh, we, uh, we have done in uh, our work is we have found out how much is the concentration for given molarity and uh, what is the relationship between W and D I have measured and put it in a graph form, equation form. It is available in the booklet and also some papers also are published on that. So again, I'm coming back here uh, to the uh, pH because everybody talks about pH as a parameter, but uh, I want to make it very clear. Commercial is uh, very um, uh, high pH and uh, uh, our um, uh, solution is also uh, same pH, similar range only, not much uh, different. And uh, when you make geopolymer concrete also, it is also similar one. Okay, so uh, we are not uh, going away from the uh, basics, okay. Now, this is a very important uh, graph. Uh, uh, produced by actually PQ Corporation and uh, 
say this is the y axis is the ph value and uh, x axis is the, how much of concentration is available for the solution okay and you can see depend upon the concentration depend upon the concentration the uh, and the ratio these are the like i told you sodium silicate sodium uh, si2 to na2 ratio depend upon the ratio the ph will change but it is ranging from 11 to 13 only not big change but it is changing okay but more important uh, okay this i have already talked about it so this also uh, i already mentioned to you okay and now this is very important uh, graph so depend upon the ratio i am having SiO2 by Na2O this x axis okay and y axis shows quantities of these chemicals present inside as i told you SiO2 is never present as SiO2 Na2 is not present as SiO2 both two will form a different uh, chemicals and those chemicals can be called monosilicate chains and you know this uh, dimer trimer like that they are called different names when these two combined form molecules and how many molecules you can see there is no one single set of molecules you can see so many types of molecules are present each represent a molecule type of molecule so if you take a ratio of two you can see this 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 if you take point one now you can see these are the ratios and if you take point for your ratio you can see these are the uh, molecules present this is very important so every sodium silicate solution is having different ranges of these molecules and these molecules react differently with the uh, fly ash and ggbs so we should become aware of that but for unfortunately this finding these uh, molecules and thing is not easy one but this has been done for last uh, more than 100 years 1920s and 30s and 10s 1910s these papers have been coming so sodium silicate uh, i want to say that it is the most mysterious solution nobody has found it exactly what it means so uh, but however uh, we are no, not going by those uh, terminologies we want to that's what i want to create a feeling that sodium silicate has got its own speciality we might respect it and find out its property uh, characterization not property means characterization and present it and keep it in the mind also so these are the names just I have collected in sodium silicate solution. Uh, these are the names of some of the molecules and these molecules uh, individually how many are present. It all depends upon the sodium silicate solution we have prepared in the laboratory for making geopolymer concrete. So we can now understand how, how important is the solution we are preparing and how was the basis of those solutions and how it reacts with our materials. Okay and uh, so this already i mentioned so now i will come to the actually the uh, properties of geopolymer concrete and uh, again i am not going to give the quantity here okay i am going to talk only in general terms because the time is very short we can have a detailed discussion in a time now fastest time development it is a proven these are what i am going to give or having our own actual numbers available i am not presenting from the literature these are all data available with us to show okay and the waste utilization okay and advantages this embodied energy carbon footprint is measured by embodied energy and embodied carbon dioxide emission these two can be calculated quantified for any concrete and we can we can be sure that it is a, a lower value okay that's why geopolymer concrete is having lower carbon footprint okay i have taken on one geopolymer mix i have taken a you know a typical mix say fly is so much ggb is so much portland cement is not there sodium and oxide flake is so much sodium silicate is a solution is so much distilled water i wanted to say to the people that let us try to use as much as possible mineralized water, demineralized water, or distilled water. It will not change the cost of the geopolymer concrete very much because most of the cost comes from sodium silicate and sodium monoxide. But advantage of using demineralized water is I showed you the molecules. At least those molecules are formed, and there is no extra molecule available 
from our water which may affect our reactions so because we have not understood the chemical reactions properly so we should not have any unknown uh, a problem creating molecules present in our water so demineralizer water is something we know exactly what it is and distilled water what you know exactly but if you take ordinary drinking for cement concrete is different ordinary concrete doesn't matter but for our reaction purpose is different and uh, so super plasticizer uh, also in the sand uh, coarse aggregate uh, concrete so all these uh, things are available and i have taken the cost also of them and I calculated the uh, embodied energy uh, megajoules, okay, and the embodied carbon dioxide emission, how many kilograms of uh, carbon dioxide emission occurs per kilogram of the cement, cost is also like that I have calculated. And uh, now I am, again, I am not going to give the comparison directly in quantification of the OPC concrete at all, but one of OPC concrete of the similar nature, I can show that density is lower, it was embodied energy is less and carbon dioxide emission is less, cost is was also almost uh, same or less and strength level we can see one with uh, strength level was less also still with geopolymer concrete was uh, better uh, higher with higher strength. So these are the numbers available to show that a, a good geopolymer concrete mix can be good also from carbon footprint of you definitely and quantifiable okay and this one is another thing acid resistance it is definitely better because there is no carbon uh, there is no calcium hydroxide present here okay generally it is uh, very less i mean when you use ggbs uh, calcium hydroxide will come but uh, geopolymer by itself will not get attacked much by acids because geopolymers are nothing but which are used in making up pyramids okay that's what there is a lot of uh, literature available on to show that uh, pyramids are made of geopolymers and also i made a presentation on that topic also few months back temperature resistance generally it is better but um, this also requires proper formulation okay and uh, people should not assume that every geopolymer concrete is fire resistant wrong only specifically designed geopolymer concrete is uh, fire resistant otherwise it is like ordinary concrete but still it is better than ordinary concrete it will lose the strength but it will be better than ordinary concrete but still we can make the formulation which will not lose the strength that is special case and fire resistance i told you it is better and protection to steel bar there is no doubt at all it is uh, far better okay so these are the things we want generally in terms of concrete these are available and uh, now look at the special aspects of geopolymer. Chemical reaction still under study. Okay, it is not yet finalized. Whereas in Portland cement completely for a finalized. And uh, geopolymer can be made from so many types of materials. And uh, not a factory made. That's why geopolymer does not mean one cement at all. One type of cement at all. It has got many, many types of cements. So a conclusion drawn in one geopolymer concrete cannot be taken directly to another geopolymer concrete uh, unless we know how much they are similar or how much they are different. This must be kept in the mind. Okay, and careful uh, formulation is definitely required for liquid component, careful formulation. That means after making the uh, solution, we should characterize it properly so that when you make next time, we are sure that the same characterization we got. We must add the chemical after making the solution. We must add its property, not assume. Okay. And I told you many formulations are possible because many things are available in the commercial side. And we can add any amount of sodium hydroxide solution of different molarity. That means so many types of formulations are possible. And it is not yet fully factory made. But we have made one, only one formulation we have given it to one company in uh, Madurai uh, and that is not the only solution possible, but that is one we have given and it has been used in many practical applications. So, uh, but definitely it is not at a factory made uh, common, because there are so many types of uh, possibilities are there. Okay, but one thing is, 
strict quality control is required. Without this, there is no question of using geopolymer concrete at all. Okay. It is also valid for ordinary concrete also. But still, here it is more uh, important. We must have the knowledge of how to control the different parameters used on this site. And chemical testing method, we should become aware. They are not very big chemical tests. After all, titration and you know some uh, drying and some weighing, they are not big things at all. We must do that. And we can train the people also. Without trained people, we cannot use it. Okay, people should get trained. Okay, and it should be. That's why it has to be an organizer site. If anybody is doing unorganized construction or uh, concrete making, they should not think about geopolymer concrete at all. Even in ordinary concrete, also in organ unorganized sector, our concrete made will be very bad. And we are not using the best of the potent cement we know very well. So highly organized site doesn't mean that uh, it is very much a big requirement. It is a requirement commonly required by a good quality control engineer. And one more thing very important is water cement ratio type of parameter is not available for a geopolymer concrete as a full parameter. Okay, it is not yet made. Only one parameter is not able to describe the property of the geopolymer concrete yet. Okay, there are a few parameters are identified and they have to be used for characterizing any geopolymer concrete mix. Okay, and those are the parameters. I took this from the literature and uh, we have used many of them, but say ratio, this is also important. How much is the water to solid ratio? Water. How much is the that uh, uh, alkaline activator? Okay, that solution we made and what is the binder? Binder means here uh, solids, fly as, GPS, metacaline like that. The ratio is important. And what is the ratio of this solution? Because generally we use this uh, making, uh, we buy the sodium silicate solution from the market. Please remember I use a sodium Na silicate. I have not used Na2SiO3. Na2SiO3 should not be used at all. We must use the sodium silicate solution, sodium silicate solution word only. Because Na to SiO3 means only one ratio. This means general. This ratio, uh, sodium hydroxide solution, the ratios, people talk about this, but we can avoid these two together. But uh, we'll discuss that later on in future. And the ratio of this, okay. Uh, Flyers has got its own reaction rates. GGBS has got its own reaction rates. And the sodium hydroxide, I told you, it is available in different uh, concentration. So this uh, six, para five parameters minimum are required. And for each sodium silicate solution, again, uh, there are uh, requirement of its own uh, density, its own uh, ratios, its own uh, concentration. These are also required. So these parameters are required to characterize a geopolymer concrete mix so that these are the important in the technology. Okay, as I told you, geopolymer binder is not readily available. That means I will buy the binder from the market. I will add water and make the concrete. It is not yet readily available. It is still under development. It will take some more time because of geopolymer itself is a so many varieties of materials. Okay, and uh, the, as I told you, you know, it is not yet readily available, uh, factory made available. Okay, one more thing. This uh, geopolymer source materials are plenty of source material. People talk about only fly ash and GGBS. Wrong. There are so many other types of uh, minerals available. Uh, maybe iron ore waste or some, you know, uh, aluminum ore waste or some other mineral waste where SIO2 and NA2 is readily available, we can use them. Or any other industrial waste, simply we can use them. So, uh, but uh, which one has to be used, which, uh, how much it is, all it is, uh, direct guidelines are available, it has to be developed for a particular set of source material and use it. Okay, but uh, something we can talk about the uh, fly ash in GGBS, but not as a geopolymer concrete as a whole. Okay, this is a general material, generic material, it has got uh, uh, resource material from different sources possible. So as I told you, flyer, GGBS, metacaline, so many other things can be added here. But all are called aluminosilicate minerals. Anything having alumina, anything having silica, anything having both of them can be used as a geopolymer concrete. 
and definitely you must use a bulk filler system because we want to uh, use the less of this material because uh, these are costlier material and we can use a bulk filler system because uh, it also gives the you know um, uh, we can say shrinkage also reduced because any paste will have more shrinkage so these are important uh, material and these are high strength material uh, depend upon the strength of the aggregate and the density of the aggregate we can get uh, lightweight aggregate or uh, normal aggregate and uh, i told you sodium silicate we are using regularly in the market in the work in india but need not be in some applications we have used even potassium it has helped us okay and uh, uh, so this uh, sodium and potassium combination also can be used so this work is also has to be done carefully and uh, uh, that means there is still a lot of work has to be done and uh, there is a chance for development and the improvement okay mixer machine there is no special requirement at all here okay and molds uh, there is no special requirement okay and compaction there is no special uh, no necessity uh, uh, requirement uh, uh, any compaction method uh, whatever is uh, i mean methods are available you can adopt any of them demolding time there is no question of less or more it is uh, as per the need we can always design this uh, demolding time it can be half a day or one hour or uh, two days anything can be planned okay so this demolding time everything is possible curing again there is no question of only uh, uh, water curing uh, okay we can say water curing is not required at all generally speaking water curing is not required because there is no hydration involved here so curing can be air curing or hot air curing or steam curing some methods as per the need depend upon the uh, grade of the concrete at what time we want we can uh, plan the curing and which is uh, again you know lot of possibilities are rate of strength it can be less it can be more anything we want okay we should not say that this is having more rate of strength development less strength, not necessarily compared to the ordinary concrete it can be anything we can design the uh, formulation as per rate of development we want on the site okay and grades we should never say that this concrete is stronger this concrete is weaker similarly we should never say flat concrete is weaker or lower strength impossible to say wrong to say and gzbs concrete is weaker it will take uh, it is also not to correct whatever strength we want we can design the concrete uh, mix proportion such that what strength to, at what time we want we can always design only proportions and mix proportion the mix ingredient will change so uh, we can see m100 to 200s had been made in the country in laboratories easily m200 also has been made in india okay Appli uh, but here we are again uh, gone by the uh, particle packing theory and uh, all those things okay and uh, probably we can make a one uh, discussion on the what is the meaning of particle packing for geopoly sorry for concrete applications we can think and uh, the most of the great work was done by lerard in uh, france and um, that is the most uh, okay and now cost cost depends upon the what is the characterization we want okay we what we want hello uh, is it okay i am able uh, here uh, i am audible Better? yes sir you are audible uh, request okay. all parties to please yeah please okay so uh, cost, it can be you know it depends upon the application and uh, what characterization we want from the geopolymer concrete okay depend upon that it can be cost can be uh, wow. different no bond bond strength is always superior there is no doubt whatever we want bond strength with the steel is available definitely and a lot of experiments have been done a phd scholar recently got his phd uh, proving this from the a chemical point of view why the bond strength becomes better in geopolymer concrete okay but i didn't mean that uh, ordinary concrete doesn't have a bond strength but it is uh, also there and here also it is definitely better it is good also what i'm telling is good sulfate resistance proven to be good and we should do both magnesium sulfate and the sodium sulfate test separately they should not be done together Uh, sorry they should not be done only sodium sulfate resistance alone is not sufficient to prove sulfate resistance so this both have been done and we have proved that magnesium and sodium sulfate 
both are uh, resistant uh, uh, why is it better okay and chloride diffusion again the chloride diffusion that is measured by rapid chloride permeability test rapid chloride permeability test it is based on the electrical uh, conduction of the chloride ions not exactly chloride ions electrical conduction of the current uh, through the concrete specimen and they have connected it to the chloride ion penetration by some experiment by whiting and that is used for rcpt but this is not valid for actually blended concrete at all okay that is a different issue but still we can use them uh, these uh, values and prove that it is uh, okay for us and this is the actual value chloride diffusion coefficient we must calculate okay not rcpt value at all so this chloride diffusion coefficient their method simple methods are available and those are uh, also used to find out for geopolymer concrete and we found them to be uh, sufficiently better and protection of embedded steel as i told you it is always there there's no doubt at all structural behavior beams have been made slabs have been made columns have been made shells have been made and t beams have been made so many types of structural behavior studies have been made on geopolymer concrete in india and they are almost similar to ordinary concrete there is no doubt that there is, so structural behavior is very very uh, you can say acceptable uh, for structural engineers for geopolymer without any uh, issue at all and this already i told you these two parameters give the lower carbon footprint definitely it is uh, okay and this is also known the high temperature since we have studied at different temperatures we found them to be good acid resistance also as i have already told thermal conductivity measurements were made and they are also good okay and coefficient of linear expansion also we have made these are very much required for the maybe for more important in payment studies and payments design and thing like that they are available okay and now we want always a change in the property of the concrete so uh, lightweight concrete we can make fly ash aggregate and add it okay as we do in the uh, and we can add fibers made of this all these materials the studies have been made already and uh, this fiber addition will increase the ductility energy absorption all those properties can be modified uh, for geopolymer concrete easily and only thing is pre stressing work is uh, just in the preliminary stage according to me um probably this work has to be done a little bit more care in more detail but whatever is done it has shown that it is okay but i feel still a lot of work is required to be done on processing unfortunately in india very few few very few colleges are having processing facility very few i am surprised so uh, i think uh, most of the civil engineering colleges should start having the processing facility in their college and start studying on the pre-test concrete because you can see on the site most of the work are getting pre-tested especially metal constructions and the lightweight uh, very lightweight blocks okay for uh, uh, density reduction foams are uh, used inside so foaming of the uh, addition of foam to the uh, uh, matrix to get the lightweight uh, blocks this is also possible in geopolymer and this work has been done now okay and uh, Uh, another way of making lightweight is adding uh, aluminum uh, and this is what is called aerated uh, uh, articulated concrete aac blocks and uh, that is also possible here and some minimum work has been done on this also okay and we added nanoparticles and found that it is also improving the property very much as uh, we expected so nanoparticles have got different uh, reaction rates and their contribution to the particle packing all are still useful here and it can, they can be used and we found in some cases it has definitely improved the fire resistance very much when used nanoparticles and ceramic particles are also one of the ways of improving their temperature resistance and we have tried them it has worked very well for for, for example zirconium oxide and thing like that as the so these are that is also a possibility okay adding uh, this kind of admixtures and one more thing application wise uh, for this safe disposal of nuclear waste where radiation resistance is required geopolymer mix can be made and a small work was started in uh, under uh, a physics student in uh, saram i guided one student it has worked very well 
and all these heavy metals and uh, industries when they want to dispose of properly um, they are talking about concrete uh, um, and this this can be definitely made in geopolymer concrete also a little bit of work was done uh, on this was uh, with chemical engineering department so we uh, tried a little bit of work but there are information is available plenty and bond strength this is one clear i wanted to just show that in a bond strength in a polo test uh, when the bond stress is calculated with reference to the actually the strain during the application of load after reaching the peak load immediately the bond failure occurs and the bond stress goes on reducing load goes on reducing but in some formulated geopolymer concrete okay actually you can see immediately it will not come down it is slowly that it is called strain hardening type of behavior is possible and that this is the special graph we got in one of the phd students good work and that's why we are having so much of difference in the geopolymer concrete bond and for this a special uh, even you know reinforcement were created to understand this okay and the the chemical bond between the geopolymer concrete and the steel is different so this is what i just wanted to tell and i got on application side uh, let me see whether i can put that also uh, are you able to see my slide yes sir yes sir Uh, actually you know uh, uh, we had a, uh, this is the scholar who made a geopolymer uh, bond strength studies and she is uh, from chemistry department in uh, saram from uh, lakshmi and uh, he, actually he is from uh, uh, actually jk lakshmi who is also uh, knowledgeable in geopolymer there they, and he is from uh, kiran global such a people were there so few indians were present in every year uh, uh, he makes a and the father of david wood is a geopolymer david wood makes a uh, two days program on geopolymer and uh, we were lucky to uh, and join uh, that uh, workshop and uh, learn from him directly and uh, so we had a uh, interaction with other foreign countries where they doing lot of work this is in malaysia there is one uni map at perlis jordan road and this person is mustafa he has produced more than 700 800 papers on geopolymer concrete and uh, all sorts of engineers uh, scientists are working in his uh, place all sorts of not only civil engineers and this is the uh, bopalan uh, who is a phd scholar and a consultant and this is one i wanted to show you this is in jakoslovakia jak the republic they use the geopolymer from the clay and other materials uh, and also metacaline to make the statues beautiful statues and these are uh, united experiment uh, experts on the uh, what you call uh, this uh, uh, clay chemist and though were those were able to produce uh, statues just like stone and repair the stones also uh, statues also this is the work done by uh, this laboratory great and these are they you know this is a chill uh, j sanjayan we know very well he is one of the man who had done so much of work on uh, geopolymer and also ordinary concrete also and whatever i want to do already had done published long back and uh, i want to say that we have done uh, local material like that and this is another great man provis he the only man talks about real geopolymer reactions in the world nobody else talks so clearly as uh, uh, and he is uh, i don't know he is the uh, a uh, basic is so much uh, mysterious somebody says a mathematician somebody says a physics somebody i don't know but terrific man and he is a uh, lot of, and these are my colleagues in uh, saram and uh, she is chemistry and these are civil engineers and uh, so th some of them visited us also when they came only for short period in uh, uh, iit and she the person uh, who has worked on uh, development of uh, geopolymers for fire resistance after the she the her phd was on that and found that uh, the geopolymer can be formulated to make the strength better after the fire and she worked on the actually admixtures this is chemist uh, person she worked on the chemist uh, pre, uh, on the so many admixtures she tried to use in geopolymer and they talk about supplies or nothing no supplies are yet available no admixture is available uh, the, the properly 
made one. We can discuss that later on. And she worked more than uh, 30 admissions from the market because she, uh, she is related to paint industry also. And uh, we found that none of them work. It has to be still under development. And uh, he is, you know, uh, B.B. Rangan. Who is the, I have been always interacting with him. He is very kind enough to uh, give us all his input. And and uh, he used a high temperature curing. We never used it, but his work was very much useful to us. B. Rangan, we had a program. And this is the person, T.P. Ganeshan. He is professor from IIT was my teacher uh, once I was doing the MS there and he only called me to start the job uh, that uh, Center for Advanced Concrete Research, complete freedom to me and uh, we developed a lot of uh, not only uh, um, uh, cement based concrete, Portland cement, otherwise geopolymer based concrete and these are the other people you know who are in the uh, from different backgrounds okay and this is one you know you people can recognize you know uh, dr jagadish and uh, this was a program under acca association of council engineers we made that chemical i told you know to the madurai per company and he produces in the laboratory in his factory and sells it and it has got limited uh, shelf life maybe one month or two months or three months but uh, we need not bother about molarity molar ratio nothing simply add this like water uh, and uh, use it in uh, geopolymer concrete limits formulation in our own way and use it in our uh, application directly and this is what you know generally we say what is the geopolymer uh, these two materials but it can be more than that and a coarser grade is added and we add the solution and we pour it and uh, geopolymer concrete mix is made and this is the you know as i told you embodied energy carbon dioxide emission for all the materials are available in the market in the literature so we need not bother and uh, so one uh, things we found out you know what is the difference between uh, geopolymer and portland cement and we we can easily see that geopolymer is having lower uh, carbon dioxide emission and cost is also slightly lower in that particular formulation and your body energy is less it doesn't mean that portland cement is always so bad if you add fly ash again uh, embodied energy reduces but still geopolymer is still it is better so uh, geopolymer can compete with the uh, fly ash concrete easily uh, not only in the embodied energy carbon exemption but other properties also and one uh, work was done with uh, so many buildings we took one of our consultant i mean he's a consultant in the market eh? he took uh, some so many buildings and put the geopolymer concrete as a parameter for studying that and uh, compared with concrete and he had developed you know the uh, parameters and how much is saving occurs in terms of embodied energy total and how much of uh, carbon dioxide emission how much of cost saving occurs and uh, how much is per uh, structural volume of the building usable volume or what is the you know, change we can get so many points were here calculated but one thing i want to put it to the point to people here is carbon dioxide emission is so important and this is the parameter available in the united nations report so if you use a, it uh, uses 2.5 tons of carbon dioxide per thousand trees per year then uh, we are saving carbon dioxide emission because uh, we are using a uh, uh, zero carbon dioxide emission material fly ash. So we can uh, calculate uh, corresponding to Portland cement uh, how much is the saving. Then we found in that building uh, 40 tons of carbon dioxide emission was reduced uh, because of uh, use of geopolymers and it related to 16,000 trees. So this kind of uh, you know, thinking and application in the mind should come. We should not talk about cost alone. What is the benefit to the society in terms of ecology? Okay, and uh, I will just pass on uh, first. You see, these are the buildings uh, made in geopolymers. Okay. These are precast elements, so many elements. And uh, actually, we had one, uh, so you can see the demonstration we made where we got one Australian to uh, show this in uh, Raichur. There is a center for ice utilization, uh, fly ice utilization, where next uh, door is the uh, Raichur thermal plant. They, their job is to use the fly ash. But we told them to use in geopolymer. They uh, actually we had a, a DST project along with them, and we can see whatever they have made in fly ash concrete, all of them they made in geopolymer concrete. And also uh, this is not uh, this also was uh, uh, I took from the literature where 
in the ferro cement they made a geopolymer ferro cement and for roofing purposes so this is one of the thing and uh, and the paper blocks we made actually we took the uh, our formulation and chemical he is a manufacturer of that chemical in the market in the factory in madurai and we produced these uh, building blocks in the factory in komethur but uh, they have to take forward next and uh, this is another place we made this uh, kind of paper blocks so this was also you know uh, one place in raichur we showed them how what are the things possibility to the students and the participants you can see these are so many lots of things have been made and um, so this is on site we made the geopolymer uh, this is the you no know, egg laying type of concrete uh, making block making machines are available we formulated the chemical formulation and geopolymer for making the egg type egg laying type of uh, building blocks and it worked very well and uh, this is the paper block production in a ordinary uh, regular paper block production facility and it worked very well and this is one we did long back in acrc more than 15 years back actually there was sponsored work from a paper block manufacturer and we actually produced all these blocks inside there using their automatic machines it worked very well so technology can be applied to the existing uh, precast industry people directly so this is the curing and we made a small road also in srm university do it was not highly satisfactory in sense because the first time we made without any presence of the road engineers and it worked very well uh, but we found that using ordinary people ordinary way of making we could make the geopolymer concrete a paper block in front of a medical college it worked very well and uh, it has done very well, good service but it can be still better if you apply the proper uh, road engineering uh, principles and uh, no this is the one in uh, uh, in chatisgarh so chatisgarh there was a 25 years uh, experience the person road engineering we made them the, to understand what is the geopolymer mix we saw the mix making and he used in his uh, rmc plant and made the uh, about 1 uh, km road uh, geopolymer concrete using the existing facilities and it has worked well okay only thing he didn't it was not continued later on and also you no know, in madurai uh, we uh, there was a present uh, there was a meeting of uh, so council engineer uh, civil engineers at the acc meeting there we uh, this uh, uh, person who make the con uh, chemical i told you know factory made chemical actually he is a producer of sodium citrate solution but we gave him a solution uh, formulation for our purpose he is manufacturing them and he demonstrated actually on a site in a uh, a campus of a hotel in madurai uh, for the all the, and it worked very well using the existing facility of the ordinary people but under uh, you can see supervision our people are there always so this i already showed and this is the one we made long long back in uh, our crc it has worked very well and uh, these are the people i can say who have helped me in understanding your polymer but especially this chemistry chemistry and i have not put here chemical engineering i have not put uh, somebody from aeronautical engineering so many people are involved in understanding and this is you know when uh, in geopolymer uh, uh, work uh, understanding to the these are uh, uh, dc uh, district uh, commissioners or whatever they call uh, they visited the all the precast uh, units made in uh, raichur in kashotech and they appreciated those things because it is for the eco friendliness and uh, this was one building built in uh, uh, anganwadi building built in raichur and this is start everything was made in geopolymer from the foundation and uh, uh, to the end you can see this this is the final building okay and uh, so uh, this is one i wanted to just show that in bangalore dr radhakrishna is there he had done lot of work on mason range of polymer in uh, rv college of engineering uh, bangalore and he has built a building uh, in uh, outskirts of bangalore and is interesting is you know any of these are details of the whatever mix he has used and these are uh, uh, this mix making but most important is this you can see in uh, winter time it is better in a uh, winter time inside is uh, warmer in uh, actually in 
and summer time inside is cooler because of the geopolymers the special the conductivity uh, this thing see outside is ambient temperature is so high inside is so low okay same thing you know in terms of uh, uh, this thing also you can see outside now room temperature is uh, outside is so low but inside is uh, so high in a winter situation so this actually measured values in a situation so in uh, later on after i left scrc you know and joined uh, SRM after retirement they continued the work and they have done a lot of work they have developed these uh, speed breakers and also they have also transferred some of the technology to the some companies and they also built a, a one uh, class uh, classroom in a central school to show that geopolymer building blocks can be used successfully and some um, payment this thing they have made in uh, the campus of uh, hrc and this one was also used in the beginning of our work in geopolymer in 2000 maybe five or something these actually these roads are made in uh, high volume flash concrete and there were taken uh, uh, this uh, course were taken to study those properties of those uh, high volume flash uh, road uh, made long long back 25 years back and that one uh, we repaired with uh, geopolymer concrete mix the bore holes and it worked well even after five six seven eight years actually there was no syncage it has worked very well and this was one thing I wanted to show that I told you geopolymer concrete can have any rate of strength development. And uh, Dr. Lakshman and uh, our director wanted to uh, show, uh, know that how can it produce equal to 24 hours strength of ordinary concrete. So then uh, we made the two slabs and joined with geopolymer concrete. And within 24, after 24 hours, we tested it for the strength. So the strength of this jointed uh, slab was almost same or better than the total uh, integrated uh, original slab. So this was also proved. So I think uh, with this I can uh, uh, close and uh, probably I have taken a little bit more time. I, and also I went very fast and uh, I'm very happy to answer a few of the questions. And also, I don't mind, you know, getting the people uh, sending the inquiries. Whatever inquiries, not based on the today's presentation, even in general also, we can combine them and make, a, you know, one more presentation or one more booklet so that is useful to the practice engineers. Thank you, Dr. Walia. Uh, uh, thank so you much. so much, sir, uh, uh, for your uh, extremely valuable presentation it was and uh, we will just move to question answer round uh, we have uh, received uh, some questions uh, in the chat box i'll just uh, uh, show those questions in on the screen and you can answer probably i'll try to you can de-share sir your uh, So, uh, sir, uh, is it visible, sir? Yeah, yeah, visible. So, uh, th there are some questions from uh, some participants uh, in the chat box. So, first question is uh, from Pratik Goel. Can LED, LD slag or BOF slag be used as fine aggregate or coarse aggregate with fly ash and GGBS based yeah, geopolymer yeah. concrete? Yes, sir. No, no, it can. See, every uh, formulation has to be treated separately. And because these uh, probably the slags have got their own little bit of chemical activity, and that can be considered during the actual mix design, actual study. After study, it can be used. Okay. okay. And Kantara is asking, you know, chloride uh, bending capacity. Uh, maybe because we are using fly ash, it may be also having similar one. Uh, so, but more than chloride bending capacity, most important is the chloride diffusion capacity. So that can be measured and that is more important. Okay, red mud. Um, red mud is mostly, you know, it is iron oxide. Uh, it can be used as a, one of the filler materials. But what happens, red mud is having sodium hydroxide also because they're doing the manufacturing. That can become useful material for us. And by red mud, by uh, it is only if it is iron oxide, it is not a geopolymeric material at all. But it can be used because we are using other add additions we are making which is a geopolymeric uh, binder developing okay yes definitely it is complicated 
and definitely it is not complicated woodland cement is also highly complicated so uh, unless one get trained uh, even people are not aware of what is the meaning of grading of cement and grading of concrete both are not aware to many people so a uh, complication there is no complication uh, training only getting awareness so getting awareness is easy there is no problem and uh, so it is not complicated but initially it is not useful for the suddenly on the site no it is useful only for the uh, valued engineers maybe in the precast industry or where the uh, good uh, training is possible definitely not day to day application on the anywhere anybody doing on the right uh, site or something no it has to be done by a practically trained knowledgeable person there is no doubt Uh, there are few more questions. Uh, uh, this is um, ground granular. Yeah, GGP is a must. So, uh, definitely, no GGP can be used. I don't know what is uh, what are the best possible way to grind granulated uh, slag. Eh? Um, yeah, as they do for ordinary uh, cement making, the same GG base can be used here. There is no separate. But if it is done more better, if it is more finer, okay. Yes. Admixture is not available in uh, geopolymer concrete at all. People are doing it and adding to the supplier. I don't know how much they have studied that uh, supplier action on that. Okay, and also we try to do uh, the, the admixtures uh, usable. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, the main reason is they were not developed for the particular portland uh, they were developed for portland cement reactions where hydration is involved and water is only involved here we are having a solution so admixture will get uh, uh, reacted with solution we get a problem and the solution get disturbed uh, and that affects the strength development not the strength development reaction itself is affected so admixtures how to be developed specifically for geopolymer a lot of study has to be done on that MIG design is um, actually uh, some guidance are available and uh, it can be used. Only thing is, uh, as we do in ordinary concrete, uh, uh, with, with some uh, basic points can be known. Probably, you know, when you add GGBS, strength development rate is higher. And, you know, but only thing is, uh, in ordinary concrete, water cement reduction is always giving high strength. Water cement reduction. That may not be the case here. Water is a liquid and cement is a solid. So, so that ratio in geopolymer concrete sometimes in decreasing always is better sometimes the increase also may be required depend upon the flash content so these parameters are required okay and one more thing is probably we can uh, better to use as less as possible chemicals because it is a highly costly material so from that point of view particle packing theory application will be better I, that's it. distill water uh, personally, I feel uh, not necessarily water, it can be demineralized water. Demineralized water is so simple, available, easily available. It can be put up anything. And uh, adding the cost of the water is not much compared to the uh, no, cost of the sodium silicate solution or sodium metoxide. It, but at least we are sure that it is not having any other ions which will affect our reaction. For example, if there is a retarder, you know, uh, you know this uh, um, lignosulfonates and things like that. Here at one level, they are used in a very small quantity, 0.01%, 0.05%. If you put 0.5% uh, or 0.1%, simply cement uh, concrete will not set at all. 0.1% is not big number, whereas supplies are 1 or 2%. So these numbers are so small, and the ions are so small, even chloride content ions are so small, it affects our strength, I mean, our uh, structures. So some of these small ions may affect our reaction. That's why I wanted to use as much as possible water, uh, that is liquid, as much as possible known water. The potable water is not at all known. Drinking water is not known chemically, how much, what is it is, really with reference to geopolymer reactions. That's what my point was. Right. And some of these points I have discussed in uh, uh, my small booklet, so I put on uh, Amazon. And uh, they're very, very nominally charged booklets uh, because I could not get the people to publish them in uh, actually hard prints. And uh, I got another three, four books on the geopolymer. I have not had to print it. Okay. So, uh, 
anything else um, dr walia uh, sir uh, i would request uh, participants if they have any question they can uh, ask their questions so i hope uh, there are no further I have questions a, hello yeah. uh, sir yes. i have a question Sir, what about the soundproofing properties of this, sir? Suppose we have a building, uh, uh, you know, and if we use this on the second floor, and if a dancer is there, and the vibration should not be transferred to the first floor, can this be having any soundproofing properties? So this will have a lot of applications for. Uh, I think know. soundproofing uh, depends upon the you know um, that. Uh, air amount of air percent and thing like that so as we do for the ordinary concrete or uh, whatever we do for sound footing in terms of design of the microstructure what is the pores and porosities and thing like that that the same can be applied here only thing we are doing here is in the using the portland cement binder we are using geopolymerized binder so for sound footing whatever is to be done which is done with the potent cement, whatever is done, same thing can be done with geopolymer also. There is no special separate, you know, what you call uh, sound uh, uh, transmission capacity, something like that. Uh, any solid particle will always transmit sound, and the sound uh, uh, transmission reduced by amount of air present there. Probably that can be designed also. But uh, not any, have any studies been done on uh, by do you know if somebody was done studies on soundproofing of buildings no, by no, using no, 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 not that done. Okay, so there is scope to do the study. I scope okay. to do that. I, if it is done uh, as we do in the potent cement, same thing can be tried in the geopolymer system. It can only the advantage is here is we are making the building eco friendly. That means uh, by not using the potent cement, we are reducing the carbon dioxide emission to the world. That's the more important point. Okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> sir, I have a question, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, sir, I am Ajit Guru from Kolhapur. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, um, um, can we have uh, to balance the charge? Can we use the doubly charged uh, molecules? Yeah, actually, um, Ajit Guru, you are from Nipane, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. You have been discussing with me. He is a chemistry person. Oh. Uh, anyhow, yes, uh, see, what he is telling is, uh, for the sake of others, I told you silicon is having four valency, no problem. Aluminum is having three valency. But we want to make it four valency, the four coordination. It becomes, you know, AL minus four minus, but it is only three is having. So we require one more plus. So that is sodium is added. That is what he calls it as charge balancing. So uh, uh, aluminum plus sodium becomes four. Silicon is four. They can manage. So they becomes balancing. Now, charge balancing is required for the purpose of neutrality of the uh, molecules inside so uh, actually uh, calcium does that job calcium calcium got double charge so two valences so it can uh, actually more efficiently do the sodium and potassium substitution but if it does more than let us say if it is more than uh, five to eight ten percent of the system calcium ions it will disturb the sodium aluminosilicate polymer formation so from that point of view uh, there is a limitation on calcium but it can be used up to eight percent directly it can be used the studies have been done it will not affect the uh, pure geopolymer system at all up to eight percent more than that it becomes a different uh, matrix so that's why when GGBC is used, uh, even up to 30%, 40%, it is not a pure geopolymer system at all. Wrong to say. So whatever we read in the geopolymer cannot be applied to this mix of sodium, so a mix of uh, GGBC and flash at all. It is not actually geopolymer alone. It is a mixture of geopolymer binder as well as uh, that cement binder of CSHL. So thank you, Ajit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir. Sir, one more question to me. Yeah. Uh, sir, can we decrease the density of uh, the geopolymer concrete by only foaming or by other means? Yeah, it can be done. It can be done. So foaming is done by adding foams also directly. 
and uh, produce the chemically produced the foams and also aluminum oxide also alumina can also be used if we have tried that yes, work, yes. both works both are working okay sir. okay thank you sir nice to see you sir thank you thank you thank you sir thank you so so thank you sir uh, uh, it was a uh, really an informative uh, session and uh, uh, as we all know uh, we uh, india is has become fifth largest economy of the world uh, apart from fifth largest economy we are the third largest carbon emitter in the world also so it is our responsibility to reduce the carbon footprints and the technologies like geopolymer concrete they are going to help because when we are producing one metric ton of uh, ordinary portland cement so the carbon emission is almost one metric ton and as uh, it was evident from sir slide and you can google it also a mature tree absorbs only 25 kg of carbon dioxide in a year so uh, you uh, see how much trees uh, we are going to virtually plant by shifting to technologies like geopolymer concrete so it is uh, the need of the hour we have to uh, convert to uh, our uh, we have to leave our conventional methodologies and uh, uh, we have we will we have to try the technologies we are uh, which are less carbon emitting technologies like that so now i i would like to just uh, share my screen is it visible sir ah, yeah yeah visible visible so these are some uh, books of sir which are on available on amazon you can just uh, write the keyword uh, raja mane you, uh, you will see these books these are available on uh, kindle edition there there you can get and uh, i would like to take the opportunity to uh, let you know about what concrete engineers is so uh, concrete engineers is a, a group of construction professionals and concrete lovers who believe in exchange of knowledge uh, we have uh, professionals from cement companies ready mix concrete companies uh, construction chemicals construction companies consultants experts government officials accommodations and students uh, we have this uh, all are there in our group and uh, apart from this uh, what we do, we organize various uh, uh, open forum discussions, webinars, seminars, web workshops, interviews, and award functions on various topics related to concrete and civil engineering. And uh, these are some of the, here you can see. And our journeys with the group was established in 2018. Now it is a legal group. Concrete Engineers is a non profit organization. And uh, we have, till date, we have done 20 uh, webinars. Today is 21st webinar uh, with Sir. And uh, we have uh, like five seminars and workshops we have done. And how you can join us, uh, you can just. Uh, drop a whatsapp message on this number or you can mail us at concrete engineers new delhi at gmail.com or admin at concrete engineers dot org uh, this is what how you can join us so now i would request uh, kar gupta sir who is our chairman to just uh, thank sir and uh, deliver a, a closing remark uh, kar gupta sir please Thank you, Ramon sir. It was an excellent presentation about geopolymers material purview. What is the materials used for the geopolymers? What is their properties? How is their proportions? What is the properties of geopolymer concrete? Ex uh, uh, explained by Rajamani sir, fantastically. So I, I think it is his part one uh, webinar and in part two, I think he will go for more, more and more details. So thank you for your, uh, you know, uh, patience, hearings, all the participants has taken their time and uh, uh, listen carefully. So 
thank you yeah and uh, this topic is a very uh, huge topic and uh, new topic also mm -hmm. for our, us civil engineers and sir has got uh, 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 everest of knowledge in this uh, geopolymer concrete so we'll be uh, uh, taking up in sessions so like today we did only introduction part so in other parts coming days we'll be uh, doing some more webinars on this topic with sir so uh, uh, on behalf of uh, concrete engineers i sincerely thank uh, sir uh, rajamane sir for uh, this excellent presentation and thank you all participants for attending so thank you sir thank you thank you very much thank you thank you very much sir thank you so with this we'll close the session right thank you all thank you thank you thank you very much